Hey guys, Elite Legionario here, and today I'll be bringing you a 3 vs 3 siege for Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion. In this particular battle, I will command the Eastern Roman Empire, and I will team up with Prince of Sparta, who has returned again. He'll be the Romano British, and the Gothic player over here, Morning Wood. So they're my allies, and we will face off against. Uh, my opponent directly in front of me, um, Nick, he's kind of the Alemanni. Uh, Morningwood's opponent, Aetius, who's named himself after uh, the Roman general Flavius Aetius, who defeated Attila the Hun at Shalons. Um, he'll be the Western Roman Empire, obviously, you must be a fan of him. And DC Ray again returns as well, and he'll be Burg Burgundy. So, um, my army consists of four units of peasants, which are, command, um, are here to dig the saps, because sap diggers take crap loads of damage from missile fire, so I will not be using good quality infantry units to dig the sap, I will be using peasants to do that, which can do it just as well. Um, I also have two units of eastern archers, these guys are fantastic archers, um, as good as the gothic raiders. Um, and also got two regular archers as well. So there's my arch force. I have six units of gold, gold, and one experience plume batarii. Um, these guys are very good with their um, plume bar bata or iron darts. Um, I can have at least ten. Uh, I reckon it's about ten volleys of them, maybe even more. Um, they'll come in extremely handy in this fight. We've got two onagers, obviously. To um, we're allowed. I was the host. You're allowed two. Um, the attackers are allowed two. Uh, artillery pieces each and I got two of these uh, Legio and Sarii um, these guys are to stop cavalry um, and provide necessary support in the infantry battle if need be as they can also throw peeler so very handy units so um, let's go over to Prince of Sparta's force um, he's got four units of Grolla Knights um, very powerful cataphract style knights very deadly two Onagers he's got um, Six units of gold, gold British legionnaires, and his uh, cavalry's um, silver, gold, silver, silver, gold, gold, sort of a mixture of that. Um, and, and these are a couple of peasants. And um, fantastically, he learnt um, that upgraded armies are much more useful. So um, he's going to um, be a lot more deadly in this fight than he has been in previous fights. And over on the other side is Morning Wood, who um, proved himself a fairly decent opponent. Um, he had several steep chosen um, war, wood, war, wood warriors. He had about five, of, five or six of those. He had about five or six spearmen, gold, gold. Um, he had several peasants as well. Um, which he was having some trouble with the saps for some reason. They wouldn't work or something. So that was kind of frustrating for him. But uh, over here, um, Aetios, is, Aetius is sending out his um, Roman cavalry. Um, to be honest, this um, I can understand what he's trying to do, but it's not a good idea to do it so early in the piece. Not enough of this Gothic infantry is preoccupied with other things, so they can focus their attention on dealing with these um, Roman cavalry quite easily. So he's sent in one unit of um, Equite Sagittarii, horse archers basically, and three units of these gold attack Sarmatian auxilia, which are very awesome looking, almost sort of like an early version of medieval knights um, in appearance, sort of. Um, but uh, because um, not enough of this um, gothic um, military other units are preoccupied, um, they can, they can easily focus their attention and they're going to destroy much of that cavalry. So he's, he's sprung that kind of trap a little early. It could have been quite deadly otherwise if he'd done it, if a lot of his units were preoccupied with getting on the wall and things. So um, I've got my, my saps have made two entry points here. Um, I'll also target the gate, probably. Um, actually, what I will do is um, target the towers because it'll make approaching easier. But ultimately what happens, I don't need actually end up using this approaching point because um, as you can see the Alemanni player is abandoning it. Um, and we'll end up coming in over here and I'll explain to you why we come I come in over here. So his force consists of um, one, two, three, four. Um, I think he's also got two over here. 
five. He's got six chosen X-Men. These and they're extremely heavily upgraded. These units are extremely deadly because on the charge they can absolutely almost put down any heavy infantry in this in, in this game. And because they've got armor piercing trait, um, they're very very deadly if they're not dealt with correctly. But they don't have a, even though it looks like they're well armored, they're not actually all that well armored, and they do um, get. Um, taken down quite quickly by arrows so that's how you want to beat them he's also got two units of spear warband um, and about f five or six units of these lombard archers which are quite deadly in themselves um, he's firing away at my um, peasants and I'm letting him do that I don't really care it soaks up a lot of his arrows um, it really doesn't matter because they've done their job now um, DC Ray he's got um, some quite a lot of golden band. Uh, he's got Night Raiders. Uh, he's got two units of Lombard Berserkers. They're very deadly. He's got uh, Lombard Archers um, and quite a, about five or six, I think it is. These um, Horde Chosen Swordsmen, very good unit. Um, uh, more golden band, more golden band, and some no Barbarian Noble Cavalry. So. Um, um, Princess Bar is going to get uh, his breach in the wall there. Um, and uh, Alaman is going to the centre, and I believe the um, the Roman will um, Aetius will also go there. He's got um, a lot of plume batarii, um, not many upgrades, he's got lots of them and lots of Khmer Tensei first cohort. So he's got a big army with only average upgrades. So they're still quite deadly though because there's so many of them. So um, I'm, as you can see, um, I could come in this way, but um, that's not really necessary. I'll come in this way and get to the action. Now, the reason I want to come in over here is because um, because Elamani's going into the centre and the Romans going into the centre, they're going to be quite far away, which means DC Ray is going to be left out here by himself. So what I'm hoping to do is, um, is get... Um, um, there, Princess Barter to come in from the front, and I'll come in from the back, and we'll not come out before his allies can help him. And that'll mean we, we will ha have a pretty quick and easy victory against him. Um, that's what I'm hoping to do, anyway. That's what I had in mind. So, um, in a moment, I will start marching my army over this way. Um, I was destroying these um, towers, um, but uh, eventually, we banned going that way. So um, the Romans going to the the, the Western Romans going to the um, centre, and so is the Alamanni. So they're going to do a centre, um, a town centre defence, um, which could be annoying, um, depending on how tired we are and how much difficulty we have getting in. So um, it's by now that I start to turn my army to march in the direction of over here to assist um, to assist. Uh, Prince of Sparta. Um, and he gets a really good shot in a moment with his onagers, um, or onagers, and he actually kills this um, this general. Um, it's quite a brilliant shot. Look, look at that. Gods be Got him. Praised. The enemy general is dead. His men know their doom approaches. So uh, he got a couple of really good shots then and just took out about half of this, a good half of this, some of this cavalry units and stuff. Um, very, very fortunate. Um, although I do wish he had focused his attention over here and made a second breach so that he could have come in from over here as well. And by the time I come in, it would have divided up um, DC enough and we could have done a lot more damage than it turns out we end up doing. We take it more than I'd like us to have taken from fighting DC. Uh, I thought we could have dealt with them a lot easier than that if we had if he'd uh, shot more entrances. Um, that's the thing, um, you should always shoot multiple entrances. We've captured the walls! Now is the time to press on and capture this place. You should always make plenty of entrances though because that way you can get more troops in faster. They don't want you don't want troops to get stalled and stuck outside the walls. It's really bad if that happens. You never want that to happen. You want to make plenty of entrances so you can get them in quickly and get them in numbers so they don't have to fight individually and lose individually. So it's why when I play I always like to make it have as many entrances as I possibly can have. Um, and that way I don't have the um, 
have to worry about my troops, you know, like, like having, over here, if he's only got, well, like, he's only got one entrance, he's only going to be at one or two units, and he's going to have a big clump of them sitting there behind, and these towers are just going to shoot him. He could have archers on the wall, and they'll just shoot him, and eventually they'll tire, and he will lose that, um, particularly with these Lombard berserkers hanging around. So that's why you want to make multiple entry points. Um, and he's got lots of room to do that. He can make one here, he can make one here, have three entry points, he can make one here and have a fourth entry point. Um, so he's got plenty of opportunity to do that, but he's just, he's just not um, aware, aware of it. And this is where he makes his attack, and I told him not to. I, like I saw him coming in, I said, hold your attack back, because um, what I can do is I can get in, and I can attack, come up here and attack behind while he attacks in the front, and that'll mean we can... Um, quite do a much better job of killing um, DC Ray's forces but he doesn't wait for me um, and as you can see here he just charges in he doesn't use his peeler either and peeler would have been extremely good to use against these Lombard Berserkers which are just tearing into his men um, he does decide to pull out and listen to my advice but now it's a bit like dangerous because he's employed me so many so close but it's useful because he's also drawn his um, Berserkers away. Berserkers have gone nuts, so that's kind of good. Um, it would be good if he had archers right now. Um, and they're also going after these peasants, that's extremely useful. But um, these Berserkers do so much damage because they're obviously Berserkers are just like that. So he sends all his Grail Knights in here. This is not a bad idea, but what he should do when this is happening is he should get his infantry in as well in mass numbers very fast. Kill these um, Berserkers immediately because otherwise they'll inflict huge casualties on him. Um, and he is doing very, he's doing, getting a lot of damage, but it's costing him a heap of these Grail Knights. Um, and more of them are coming in now, and, and this is going to be really bad when this unit gets in, because his units are going to get bogged down. Um, and he, sh he needs to get these guys in here, he, he just needs to get them in, because his Grail Knights are getting beaten down, and they're really be a valuable, expensive unit that can be really decisive in this battle. So as you can see, uh, a lot of Grail Knights died, um, and that is just really bad. Um, fortunately he does get some Peeler off, but of course again, um, he doesn't really um, think about putting his Peeler on and off, um, so his Peeler are going to get suspended where some might have been better to have been saved. But um, this is useful because DC is now um, focused over here. I'm going to rush in and hopefully get him behind him and take advantage of his um, chaoticness. But uh, in a good move, the uh, Alamani has going to stall me with archers. So I have to divide my forces, which isn't ideal. But fortunately, my long-range eastern um, archers should be able to do plenty of damage to these Lombard archers. Although Lombard archers have got a higher attack. They just don't have as much range. So, um, as you can see, um, these berserkers are still going, and as you can see, um, although he's beaten a lot of, he's beaten these units, um, that's only a small portion of DC's army, it's taken an enormous dent out of, um, out of Prince of Sparta's army, it's taken probably half his army almost, um, I'd endeavour to say probably about 40% of it, so that's pretty bad, um, and he, he, we didn't, he didn't time the attack. If he had done it right when I'd arrived, um, we could have killed DC much easier, I felt. Um, but um, I did tell him to wait, but he just uh, he just didn't. So um, here I charge my peasants in. I don't expect them to win, but what it will do is it'll cause his archers to run away because they're on skirmish mode, or it'll cause them to get engaged, which means my archers can shoot at them without getting worried about getting shot at shot back at, you see, so it's useful as well, it gives them a little edge in the arch duel. So as you can see, a lot of dead British units here, um, and that's not good. So, um, my peasants um, are useful though, because they give me quite the edge in the missile duel. Um, he's flaming my plume batarii, and that will do him no good, because um, they are well guarded. So here he actually charges his warlord into my um, into my plume Batario, and the charge does do quite a bit of damage, and I have to hold that out for a while. But um, they're now throwing their um, their plume barter um, into this golden band. Um, but uh, as you can see, they're pretty much route right on contact. And I've also got two units of archers in the back as well, um, providing extra support. So. Um, this um, golden band are quite a tough unit. Um, they have a really cool picture where they have an axe and a sword in their hands, but for some reason they don't use their axe, which is kind of disappointing. It would look cool. Um, 
Although it says my Plume Batario are losing, they'll quickly beat them down. They won't have the discipline like the um, Plume Batario. As you can see, my men are fresh, as men are winded, and um, you know, they're just not doing as well. It's a cavalry charge that could be a concern. But you see, um, again, another mistake that um, that uh, Prince makes is he goes all the way around to join me when he could have come um, through here. Um, and hit them in the flank, which would have been much better. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because my men are going to beat him, beat um, these DC's forces anyway. Um, so it's not really a big deal. Um, and his fleeing troops will just receive a nice um, load of these um, of the of the darts. Um, as you can see, they're still throwing them, and uh, his routing units are getting bashed down. Over here, uh, I'm winning the missile duel pretty handily. Well, I am taking some casualties in this unit, but this other unit's doing really well and getting a lot of kills. But I only had two archers up against like five, so that was kind of why that was happening. Um, as you can see over here though, um, these Grail Knights come in, which causes a mass rout, which was handy, but I think if he'd come from behind it would have been easier. But um, as a result, DC's forces are pretty um, beaten now. Um, and as you can see, um, most of my Plume Batario, I didn't take too many casualties, I only took about 20 casualties, um, but his forces took a lot more. And I still have um, two more out here. So, um, the Missile Jewel will go in my favour for the most part, um, even though there was a lot less of me. Um, and as you see, the towers are actually shooting us, which is really annoying. Um, and this is what I was talking about, why you need to destroy the towers. So here's some more, um, some more horde chosens. Um, for some reason though, some of my plume batario rushed out there, which was kind of annoying, it was a waste. And I'm quickly trying to re reform myself, as you can see, so I can continue throwing the plume, um, my iron darts as, as I am doing over here. And it is um, inflicting, my archers are now inflicting damage on them, so um, that'll kill DC pretty good. Um, and they're also continuing this missile duel. And what we end up going to do is the battle's going to take place in this alley here, the main battle. But as you can see, the Rome, the other two, um, the Alemanni and the um, Anasios, are doing very well. Um, and but DC is stalling us for a long time. And here, um, annoyingly enough, some of my Plume Batari I followed, and I didn't really want them to do this, um, um, which was a really, really bad thing that happened. Um, um, I didn't mean for that to happen, uh, so I'm going get, to uh, get out of that because I don't want that to, didn't want that to happen. Um, the Grail Knights here, so you're very depleted, but these guys could have done something really deadly if a lot of, if he didn't lose so many of them to the Berserkers out here. Um, of course, uh, obviously you're going to lose a lot of men to Berserkers though, so um, he did the best he could there. But uh, they could have been extremely powerful if they had been given their chance. Um, so, um, as you can see, um, we've been pretty successful in dealing with DC with not too many casualties. Um, a few casualties, but nothing drastic. Um, and of course these archers are getting mopped up pretty good, which is great, so we need to get rid of them. But there's still a heap of these Roman archers here, which will be a real nuisance in the upcoming battle. But as you can see, his forces consist a lot of Plume Batarii and Comedic Tense First Cohorts and things. Not many upgrades, but enough of them there to be um, quite a danger. Um, and that's the thing with the defense. Uh, the defenders could probably go for more, less upgraded troops, and the attackers who probably need more upgrades to ensure that they can get in. I think I personally prefer attacking because it's much harder than defending. Um, I think defending is much too easy. 
So here I'm going to use my Plumbatario um, to destroy the remainder of these Lombard Archers. Um, and that's going to be certain death for them. And that pretty much kills DC, except for some of his cavalry down there. Um, and now we're preparing to move in um, to form up here. Uh, while all this has been happening, um, the Gothic player has been uh, moving in to uh, do the best he can do. Um, but he needs to be careful about when he times his attack as well. I mean, we need to time our attack simultaneously, but the problem is, and I have to be honest, I don't understand why he brought so many spear units. Um, he brought like half spearmen. He should have brought um, plenty of these steep horde chosen warriors with as many upgrades as he could afford, but he also gets some of the slightly weaker sword warriors and a good, good mix of gothic raiders tossed in there as well. Um, maybe only about two spear units because... Um, there's only very few cavalry, really, that have been employed in this fight, and cavalry are not that effective in cities. They can be, but they're not, not generally, they're not. So I'm not really sure what, why he brought that particular sort of setup. So um, I'm going to triple speed, guys, because this is just us wandering through the city for quite a while here. So, um... As you can see, DC's moved the remainder of his forces, some archers and some cavalry um, around out here to harass the gothic player, Morning Wood. And here's his, uh, well, a member of his general unit, not his general, because they got hit by that stray on a just yard. Um, and we'll just sit here, and I'm explaining a few things to Princess Barter at this point about how we're going to attack. Um, I want to take up the front because my Plume Batario is stronger than his British Legionnaires and I need, um, I want to throw my uh, my darts into that, those um, Alemanni forces and then he can reinforce me. So um, as you can see, um, I'm going to go back to normal speed now guys because I'm getting moving. So I'm moving into position and there's my Roman general there. I'm um, not sure where the British general is, if he's still, oh you see there, he, no. He's probably in the cavalry. Yeah, he's in the cavalry. Uh, I'm not sure. There he is. So there's the British general. Uh, the Roman one. The Atius one's over here. There he is. This could be Flavius Atius himself. And the Gothic one. I don't know why I'm looking at the generals. I just am. Here's the Gothic one here. In the back here with the cape. There he goes, right there, with the cape and the wee bit on his head. And I'm not sure where the Alemanni one is. And this could be him over here. Yeah, he looks rel pretty much the same. All the Barbarian ones look the same, but it is a good look. Just different colours. So, um, I'm going to form my men up um, in this lane. Two, two abreast, basically two next to one another, and then two behind. And just going back in columns, basically. Um, give, give us plenty of density. I'm going to put my um, Legio Lansaria in the back too, because um, they'll throw their peeler at the top, and if they come in from the back with any cavalry, they're there to shield the flank. Um, it's these chosen axemen that bother me the most, actually. So the problem with the Gothic player's approach is he really only has one avenue, one very thin lane to approach from, and that's going to be quite hard going. Um, and he's also got to worry about these... Um, these units here, so he, um, he should send some spear units at the back. So, um, as this is happening, um, we're forming our lanes up, and I also, um, I had temporarily forgotten about this unit here, but I am remembering it now, so it's coming down. And this unit here, uh, I'm pretty sure it got stuck and it wouldn't move, which was annoying. So as you can see at this death build, most of it's DC's units. There's very few of mine in here. Um, there's one or two, but if you look at my statistics, my troops, um, most of my Plume Batarii are full strength. Um, only lost about 20, probably about 20 most of any of those units. And one of them lost down to about 50 though, so I'm going to advance up. Um, again, keeping formation. Although I do probably regret putting my general in the front row like this, I, I forgot about that. Um, it would have been better if he had been in the back a bit more, and I could have um, had him there with support. 
Um, the difference here is um, uh, Princess Barter didn't know how to get his men formed up like this, like I had them. When he was moving them in, he would have just been clicking them in here and they would have been kind of clumped. So we've got a nice shower, nice drizzle here. And for some reason my onage is on fire. Uh, I think it's because this tower here was shooting, yeah it is. But I'm not concerned, I can't get them into the city unfortunately. Um, it wouldn't root, it doesn't let you bring them in for some reason, which is kind of a disappointment because I could have sat them here in the alley and bombed them away and that might have been quite effective. So, uh, as I said, these Roman archers are going to be an extreme nuisance and this is where I wish the Gothic player had brought archers. Um, he has brought no archers at all um, and that's really detrimental. He's brought far too many spearmen. I, I still couldn't understand why he brought all those spearmen. Um, there's just no cavalry in, the, in a seat. There's, in most cases, there's going to be no cavalry in a siege fight um, and yeah I just don't really quite understand why he did that so as you can see the British player um, has, he doesn't really know how to form his troops up in the alley like this so they're going to be kind of clumped up like this which is kind of um, it's not a big deal but it would have been better if they'd been formed but um, I did tell him how to do it but um, I'm not sure if he picked up quite what I meant so I'm bringing my archers in um, and it appears this unit did get unstuck, thankfully, and I've got my one more unit of Pumpetarii coming up. And uh, I want to um, get my archers up and ready to battle. Unfortunately, um, in, the, in the back here, I can shoot his um, archers here, but they've got quite a significant archer advantage. I only had four archers. Um, and I was the only one on my team who brought archers, um, but the other team had... Um, all of them had archers, and the Roman player had six archers, and so did the Alemanni player. So they had about four times as many um, archers as we did. So um, missile supremacy was easily theirs. But um, that's the thing, a defender should always have archers, but I think the attack should always have some too, solely if just to, to be um, a distraction um, for their archers while your other units do their business. But uh, my eastern archers have got the range. Um, they are here somewhere. I, I think they've come up a bit because his troops moved back. And I actually ended up taking quite a lot of casualties off the Roman, both of these guys and the arch duel, because he's a lot more clumped up than I am, which means my shots are a bit more accurate. Plus I'm mixed in with the plume battario, which allows them to shield the archers. So we're just going to missile duel. I really wanted to save my arrows for these... Um, chosen axemen because like I said earlier they don't have even though they look like they're armored they don't actually have a lot of armor against arrows um, much like they didn't in regular round total war um, and they could have been quite quite effective so um, unfortunately in here there's no loose formation capability really so you have to be in tight which is less efficient but I'm moving up my um, men to um, stand in front um, just um, takes and shield some of the hits for them. And as you can see, um, he is quite. There's a lot more hit. There's archers more clumped up than me. So um, I'm going to hit every time I hit somewhere. But again, I've got a lot less arrows firing. So what I'm doing is I'm just advancing my um, infantry up. Now the reason I'm advancing them up is simple. Um, once I get close enough, he'll simply pull his um, archers. His archers will be on skirmish mode and they'll run back, which will give my archers some time to hit them while they're not getting fired at in return. So that's that's why I marched up like I did. Um, and I'll continue doing so in a moment. So as you can see, I've kept a nice formation as I've moved up. And as you can see, he is taking quite a lot of casualties with his archers. Probably more so than I am. So I'm going to keep coming up now. Um, I want his archers to retreat so I can um, hit them a little bit without having to worry too much about um, return um, fire. But uh, these units, arrows in the back are going to have uh, quite a bit of attention. And this is where... Um, where I really wish the goth had, if he had some goth rays he could park them here and he could shoot, shoot away. Um, they've got good range and they're very powerful. 
and yeah, that, that's where I really wish we had more arrows. Um, so he's going to attack with a spearman. I really don't want to waste my pumbata on or my peeler and pumbata on them. Um, so I allow them to attack, but um, this is a wise move because it covers much of his other troops. So uh, my Plumbatari will make effortless work of this Spear Warband um, and any other units, but it's, I want to save the um, the, the Plumbatari or the Iron Shafts for these um, Chosen X-Men. But um, this is a smart move because by charging in like this he makes it much harder for me to um, throw them because they'll be engaged. But um, this is an easy battle for my guys to win. Um, that's not a problem. But um, it's a good move because it means I'm preoccupied and when he comes in with that heavy charge from his chosen X-Men it will be quite devastating. So um, I, this will go on for a while and he's flaming me too which isn't a bad move because it will reduce my morale but my guys are pretty tough in that department. Um, as you can see look, quite a lot of dead archers in there. Um, I don't know if I have many men left with arrows, but um, they are doing what they can do. And I, I said to him, he charged his Grail Knights in here, and this was... Uh, I wasn't I wasn't too sure if it was a good idea or not, because... Um, as you can see, it's messed up my formation, but it does cause a bit of a mass rout. Um, and now I turn on my... Um, on my Primbata, because I want to fire at these Chosen Axemen, which are now coming in. So they're now throwing their, um, their darts in. Um, but I'm not going to, I'm getting quite a bash down now. Um, even though I'm getting plenty of these iron darts coming in and doing quite a bit of damage, these chosen axemen have attacked right when I've been weakened. But um, I really, I'm really glad I saved them for these axemen. So um, they'll sit there and they'll throw their uh, iron darts all day until they're out, and there'll be a lot of a lot of volleys out there. Um, his general's up in here too, though. It's kind of risky. But so is mine. That was a mistake on my part. Um, but these uh, chosen axemen are so numerous in number, and they're the armor-piercing axe. They're doing a lot of damage. And of course, now the uh, summation auxilia makes a charge, which means I, I tell him to bring in some more of his troops, because um, this side over here is completely coll collapsing away. But um, that's why he brings in some of his troops. I don't know if he's got any peeler left or not. I, I'm not sure. Um, but we do, it's a pretty even sort of fight. Um, and of course my um, Legio Lansarii are now throwing their peeler. You can actually see them doing it. Um, but uh, his legionnaires start to rout pretty quickly. Um, not the same discipline as my Plumbatarii. And my general just died. Which is... So, may soon be bird food too. so now the gothic player comes in because like I said he's very clumped up um, and really really poorly but and look at this just a massive wave of flaming arrows um, he's just not going to be able to too many spearmen and not enough swordsmen basically um, but uh, we we do manage to beat down the Alamani player um, quite well um, it is pretty even but as you can see, the British troops are routing and my general unit routed, which is bad. Um, so as you can see, I've still got Peeler going in, and we're starting to beat these Axemen at last. Um, it's just all about the timing of the Peeler. But over here, um, look at this, just a huge mass rout of these armed um, forces. And that was due almost entirely to the fact that it was spearmen and not infantry. Um, and once the spearmen routed, the infantry would have routed. This turn of events may make them lose heart. Um, and that's really kind of annoying. But uh, we do manage to rout pretty much the entire Alemanni force, which is good. Um, and I still have a few of my, quite a few of my um, men left. And most of these axemen were destroyed in that assault. But unfortunately now that the Roman infantry is free up, freed up, it can just sit there and fire it well. So um, 
the goths just didn't really, you know, their, their, their attack angle was horrible. Plus he was disorganised in his attack. You need to form up nicely when you're going to attack like that. We were formed up, or at least I was, and I've managed to hold out the longest. So unfortunately the Roman Legion, um, ATS's Romans are going to come in and that's going to be a problem. And we're throwing whatever I've got left. So we just wipe out the remainder of those Axemen. But um, sort of in a crazed charge, these British Legionnaires attack. Um, and they're kind of out of formation. But I want to throw what's left of all my Peeler and, and um, Primbata before... Um, um, before I go in completely on the full. But um, by this point, um, the flat flaming arrows are coming in and there's a big rout starting to happen. And um, our men are just not going to have enough, I don't think. And there's too many uh, Roman troops coming in to assist now. So um, the Gothic player really just didn't do enough damage. Um, here he charges in his um, auxilia, but um, Legio Lansarii... Um, Oh, they break actually, um, but they would have been quite good against them otherwise, but they're tired and exhausted from other fighting. And as you can see, uh, my forces are starting to collapse, and that's the end of my forces. So basically, that is the end of us, and we're going to get mass routed here, and uh, we'll be destroyed completely. But um, it was a quite a, quite a haul. They have no more stomach for this fight! So we pretty much destroyed the um, Alemanni player and we're in the in DC Ray, but um, ATS's army was pretty much untouched. It just pulverised. Um, it just pulverised the Gothic army, which was so many spearmen. It was like more than half of it was spearmen. Terrible decision. Uh, I don't know why you'd bring spearmen to a fight where it's going to be mostly infantry swords, which are good against spearmen. It's just a bad choice. So I'm just on triple speed to the end of this, guys. It's just them running us down. Um, and it is death to us. We have lost this fight. But um, we fought bravely to the end. Um, and we did quite a lot of damage. A defeat! So many good Romans have died for no purpose! So, um, there's the end guys, it says clear defeat, so we got destroyed completely. Um, I had 1,513 men, got 1,290 kills and 101 left. Morningwood, um, 1,570, and he got 374 kills and 34 men remain. He mass routed basically because he just didn't have very good uh, infantry to cut, cope with, or any archer support to cope with um, ATS's army. And Prince of Sparta, 913, got 433 kills and 34 men remaining. Um, um, he had the potential to go really far in this fight, um, but he probably squandered too many of those Grail Knights against the Berserkers. Um, they could have been quite deadly otherwise. And if he if he um, formed up like I did in the alley up here, um, that might have been a wee bit more organised and better. But ATS had 1,305, got 2,073 kills, and he had 956 men remaining. So um, hats off to him. He takes the uh, number one slot in this game. DC Ray, 919, you got 797, 145 men left. Good game to you, of course. And Nick, 1,128, 811 kills and 406 men remaining. So we basically killed DC and Nick. Um, but I'm the only one who got over 1,000 kills. So I actually come in second place for kills, which is quite cool, considering I was on the losing team. As you can see, my Plume Batari, I just got loads of kills. 186, 248, 204, 111, 127. Only this one here that got 51 didn't do so great. So they got heaps of kills. They're always good. Um, peasants, obviously, they were just junk. Um, the Legio Lansarii, they didn't do that well, but they were okay support. Eastern Archers, 132, 66 for the Archers, 70 for these. So the Eastern Archer only got 23, though. So um, it wasn't too bad, um, but the Plumbatarii were the ones who got all the kills this time and some of the Archers. So, um, good game to Morningwood, Prince of Sparta, Aetius, DC Ray, and Nick. Um, thanks for playing, guys. I really enjoyed it. And again, guys, um, if you're interested in Barb Invasion, just leave a comment or something like that, and I'll um, look to play you at some point in time. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.